The financing package, which is part of a larger funding plan, totaling approximately 123 million Namibian dollars, includes support from Norway and export finance-backed loans and local Namibian financial institutions. On Namibia's rugged Atlantic coast, where cold currents sweep past the small port of Luderitz, a surprising new industry is taking shape. For the first time in Africa, salmon farming is moving offshore. With Norwegian expertise and African ambition, Namibia is setting out to raise a fish never found in its waters before. A new industry emerges. For generations, Luderitz has been known for fishing hake, horse mackerel, and lobster. But now this harbor town is becoming the launch pad for Africa's first commercial sea-based salmon farms. Two major players are leading the charge. The African Aquaculture Company, often called AAC, backed by Norwegian seafood veterans, and Benguela Blue Aqua Farming, led by Austrian entrepreneur Johannes Aldrian. Both companies believe Namibia's coastline, shaped by the icy Benguela Current, offers conditions comparable to Norway and Chile, the world's largest salmon producers. The water is cold, stable, and nutrient-rich. With licenses in hand and investment secured, these projects are turning Namibia into a pioneer for salmon in the Southern Hemisphere. But why salmon? And why here? Salmon is one of the world's most valuable fish, with demand soaring in Europe, Asia, and North America. Global salmon consumption has tripled since 1980. According to MarketWatch, the industry is expected to double in value from 2024 to 2033, reaching about $36 billion. For Namibia, salmon offers a chance to diversify its economy, generate jobs, and open new export routes. The African Aquaculture Company and AKVA Group. One of the most important developments came in September 2025, when AAC signed a collaboration with AKVA Group, the Norwegian aquaculture technology supplier. This deal is what made Africa's first sea-based salmon farm possible. Their plan begins with five floating pens equipped with moorings, automated feeding systems, underwater cameras, and digital monitoring solutions. This is not small scale. The production license already secured allows AAC to eventually grow up to 51,000 tons of salmon per year across three offshore sites. Helga Kroganis, AAC's chief executive officer, said the financing and partnership set Namibia on a path to becoming a significant player in the global salmon market. He stressed that the company's mission is not only to produce salmon, but also to build a responsible, long-term industry for the continent. Backing him is AKVA's export director, Chell Egil Riska, who explained that their role has been to adapt Norwegian systems to Namibia's environment. We have worked closely together to find solutions suited both to the environment and to local challenges, he said. This isn't just a technology transfer, it's the creation of a whole new sector in Africa. Norway, the land of snow-capped mountains and deep fjords. Investment and financing. In May 2025, AAC confirmed that $2 million in initial equity financing had been secured, equivalent to about 41 million Namibian dollars. That funding came from investors in Norway, Namibia, South Africa, and China. Provisions are in place to scale the total equity funding to $6 million. The loans were also supported by Norwegian export finance guarantees, giving the company security to begin building its first smolt farms and offshore facilities. Phase one is focused on producing 1,000 tons of Atlantic salmon each year. That production will be sold both locally and abroad. But the long-term plan is much bigger scaling up to the licensed capacity of 51,000 tons annually. Clement Kaukwetu, AAC's country director in Namibia, said the financing was more than just capital. It represented a commitment to job creation and skills transfer. This project is a beacon of opportunity for Namibia. It will not only create jobs, but also equip the local population with skills to thrive in the burgeoning global aquaculture industry, he explained. The Benguela Blue Aqua Farming Vision Running parallel to AAC is Benguela Blue Aqua Farming, or BBA. This project was announced in early 2024 and is driven by Johannes Aldrian, an Austrian entrepreneur with an eye for both opportunity and long-term planning. Aldrian's blueprint is bold. Within 10 years, he aims to see BBA reach an annual capacity of 35,000 tons of salmon. To do this, he plans to build an integrated system, from onshore hatcheries with desalinated water to offshore farming structures resembling oil rigs. The plan includes a jetty, offices, storage, 
and processing facilities. The process works step by step. Salmon are first hatched on shore until they weigh around 150 grams. They are then transferred into well boats, each capable of holding 1,000 cubic meters. From there, the smolts are pumped into massive offshore tanks. Once they grow to around 4.5 kilograms, they are harvested and transported back on shore for processing. Aldrian is confident Namibia can replicate the success of Chile and Norway. We foresee operations will be fully functional at this site within 10 years, he said. Our goal is to reach an annual production capacity at Luteritz of 35,000 tons for export and local markets. Why Luteritz? Luteritz is not an accidental choice. The bay already has a functioning harbor, a seafood processing industry, and logistics in place. That infrastructure gives the salmon projects a foundation that would be difficult to replicate elsewhere. More importantly, the Bengala current provides the right environmental conditions. It runs cold between 10 and 16 degrees Celsius and is rich in oxygen. According to AAC's environmental assessments, no salmon lice have been detected in these waters, a problem that often plagues salmon farms in the Northern Hemisphere. These cages are located in deep ocean waters with clean, oxygen-rich currents, closely simulating the natural conditions of wild salmon. This makes Namibia's coast one of the few remaining frontiers for large-scale salmon farming. As Kaukwetu put it, Namibia is the last frontier for salmon farming. Training and employment. One of the strongest arguments for salmon farming in Namibia is job creation. AAC has projected that once it reaches full production capacity, over 5,000 direct and indirect jobs will be created. These roles will range from aquaculture technicians maintaining offshore cages to logistics workers to staff in processing plants. BBA's projections are smaller but still meaningful, with about 600 direct jobs and 1,500 indirect ones expected. For a town like Luteritz, which has limited employment opportunities, this represents a major economic shift. To support this, Norwegian aquaculture specialists are working with Namibian crews to provide training and technology transfer. The aim is not just to bring jobs, but to build long-term skills that can anchor an aquaculture industry across Southern Africa. Environmental Management No large-scale aquaculture project is without challenges. Open-pen salmon farming has raised concerns worldwide. Waste and excess nutrients can alter marine ecosystems, while viruses and parasites risk spreading from farmed to wild fish. Critics also warn that salmon feed, often made from wild-caught fish, puts pressure on food-insecure regions. A 2024 report by the NGO Feedback, called Blue Empire, estimated that nearly 2 million tons of wild fish are extracted annually to make salmon feed. Much of this comes from Northwest Africa, where food insecurity is already a problem. The Norwegian Salmon Association has warned that this practice steals resources from the poorer populations to provide food for the richer. AAC and BBA say they are tackling these concerns directly. AAC has partnered with Skredding, the Norwegian feed producer, which has committed to sourcing responsibly and disclosing the origins of its marine ingredients. BBA is exploring local production of feed ingredients in Namibia to reduce reliance on imports. Aldrian has promised that BBA will not use antibiotics. Instead, the salmon will be vaccinated and bred for resistance to pathogens. He also emphasized the use of escape-proof cages, designed to prevent farmed fish from entering the wild. Cameras at remote feeding stations will monitor feed use to reduce waste. Both companies are working under Namibia's Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Land Reform's Environmental Management Plan, which adheres to international codes. Global Salmon Market To understand Namibia's move, it helps to look at the global context. In just the first quarter of 2025, Norway exported over 285,000 tons of salmon, a 16% increase from the previous year. Chile and Scotland are also leading players. Africa, by contrast, has so far played only a minor role. Lesotho has built a successful trout industry, exporting to Japan and South Africa. South Africa has experimented with organic-style salmon farming along the Wild Coast since 2016. But large-scale sea-based salmon farming is new, with AAC aiming for 51,000 tons annually and BBA targeting 35,000 tons, Namibia could soon produce close to 90,000 tons per year. While still small compared with Norway, this would make Namibia a leader in Africa, 
The global salmon market is forecast to grow at about 6.7% annually, reaching nearly $40 billion by 2029. Demand is driven by protein-rich diets, health trends, and the push for sustainable seafood. Namibia's location gives it a strategic advantage, with shipping routes to Europe shorter than those from South America. Export Plans From the very beginning, exports have been central to Namibia's salmon projects. AAC has identified Southern Africa, the Middle East, and Europe as key markets. BBA is also eyeing Europe and Africa as its main targets. Proximity matters here. Namibia's Atlantic ports are closer to Europe than Chile's Pacific farms. That means fresher deliveries and potentially lower transport costs. At the same time, both companies stress that part of their production will serve the African market. With Africa's population now around 1.4 billion, rising incomes and dietary changes could increase demand for high-quality protein sources like salmon. Community-based aquaculture in Namibia while the spotlight is on Luteritz, Namibia already has smaller community-based aquaculture projects inland. The Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources supports farms such as Mpungu in Kavango West. There, local cooperatives manage tilapia ponds with support from the government in the form of feed, fingerlings, and technical guidance. In 2020, Mpungu harvested 2.8 tons of tilapia. The ministry oversees about eight such projects across Namibia, including Kamutjonga Inland Fisheries Institute in Kavango East, the Apalela Fish Farm and Onavivi Inland Aquaculture Center in Omusadi, and the Ongwediva Center in Oshana. These smaller initiatives are designed to improve food security and spread aquaculture knowledge within communities. Namibia ranks among the top 10 fishing countries in terms of production value and exports globally. Africa's growing aquaculture. Africa's aquaculture sector has grown more than five-fold between 2000 and 2022, according to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. In 2023, aquaculture output grew by 12% year-on-year. Salmon remains a niche, but projects like AAC and BBA show the continent is beginning to target premium species. This fits a larger pattern. Lesotho's trout exports, South Africa's attempts at salmon, and new investments in yellowtail kingfish are all signs that Africa's waters are being reimagined not just for subsistence, but for high-value exports. Risks and Challenges Despite the promise, there are real risks. Offshore salmon farming is capital intensive. It requires cages that can withstand storms, well boats for transport, feed at stable prices, and processing facilities onshore. Any weakness can cause financial losses. In South Africa, the Atlantis West Coast Salmon Project A proposed $47.4 million land-based facility was withdrawn because of environmental concerns. Lesotho's Pure Salmon Facility has battled power supply problems, forcing investments in solar infrastructure. These examples show how fragile such ventures can be if conditions shift. Namibia will need to balance its ambitions with careful management, ensuring both investors and local communities benefit without damaging ecosystems. Looking ahead, by late 2025, production at Luteritz is expected to begin, with the first harvest scheduled for 2026. By 2027, both AAC and BBA expect to be delivering salmon at scale. For Namibia, this represents more than just exports. It is a diversification of its economy, an opportunity to build technical expertise, and a chance to play a role in a global market dominated by Northern Hemisphere countries. As Clement Kaukwedu said, the project's location along the Benguela Current allows for the cost-effective production of premium quality salmon at competitive prices. This positions Namibia as a potential hub for sustainable seafood production in Sub-Saharan Africa. The Journey From community tilapia ponds in Kavango West to high-tech salmon pens in Luteritz Bay, Namibia is carving out a new role in global aquaculture. With partnerships between Namibian leaders, Norwegian veterans, and international investors, Africa is stepping into the salmon industry for the first time. The journey will not be without challenges, feed sourcing, environmental management, and infrastructure demands will all test these projects. But if successful, Namibia could soon be exporting thousands of tons of salmon to Europe, the Middle East, and beyond, while also building a local industry that trains and employs thousands. The salmon farms of Luteritz are more than just cages in the sea. 
They are symbols of Africa's entry into a new global market, one with the potential to change both the coastline of Namibia and the plates of diners worldwide. So, what do you think will Namibia's salmon industry thrive? Or will challenges sink the dream before it takes off? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.